Hey everyone, so in today's video, I'm going to go over all the housing placeholders updated to 2024. This video is mostly going to serve as a video for where if someone asks about placeholders, I'll link them to this video. Or in any future videos that talks about placeholders, I'll recommend to watch this video. With that out the way, let's get started. So I have a little demo set up here, which we'll go to in a minute, but I want to start by just showing you the placeholder. So in your house, you can do slash placeholders, and this will show you a huge list of all the placeholders that you can use in your house. Now you might think, okay, this is it, I'm all done. And while that's true, you can't just leave the video now. I'm gonna go over in the video each one specifically, what they return, what they give you, and a few placeholders that have some special things that you might not know about, so it's worth sticking to the end. So let's get started. Now the placeholders in housing return two things. They can either return a string, also known as just text. Um, an example here would just be hello world, or an integer, or just uh, also known as a number. Now this is using the random integer, that's why you can see different numbers here. I'll explain more when we get to the actual placeholders, but there's two types that the placeholders can return, words or just numbers. Also note that housing does not support decimals or doubles. So the only type of numbers that you will see is just full uh, whole numbers. So going in order of what the placeholder command returns us, we're going to start with uh, server placeholders, then move on to player. We're going to go to house, go to date, and then the special ones um, down here, like random integer and stat. Before we actually go into all the placeholders, real quick, I want to show you how to actually apply a placeholder. So a placeholder can be used anywhere that has where you enter text. This could be a hologram, a chat message, an NPC, an action bar, a title, literally wherever. The only place that you cannot enter placeholders is the housing name. To enter a placeholder, I'm going to show you with a hologram. Edit it, go to the line or the text or whatever. If we scroll up, we can find a placeholder. Let's use the player.health placeholder. We'll just have a little text that says uh, player health. And then to use a placeholder, we're going to use a color code that makes it red. And then do percent sign player.health. Now you don't need the color code. I'm just making it so it's a little bit fancier. Enter that and there we go, player.health. And now the text that we entered has been changed to a number. And that is the player health. Now this is my player health. So if someone else were to be here and they were a bit more damaged, they would see their player health. You could call these local placeholders. But yeah, we're going to get into all the placeholders now. So the format for the placeholders is I'm going to show you the um, the name. So to actually apply this to a placeholder, you just had percent sides to the ends. But first we have server.name. This returns the Hypixel server name. On the scoreboard, you can see M265Q. That is the server. That is the server name of the house that we are currently in. And you can see a shorter name using the server.short name placeholder. Now time for the player placeholders, and there is a lot. First we have player.name. This returns a text or a string of the player's name. We have player.ping. This returns a string or a text of the player's ping followed by the text ms. What's cool about this is if that the ping goes over 100, I believe, the text turns yellow. And at a certain limit, it turns to red. I don't remember off the top of my head. Now there's something special about player.ping, which I'll show you in a minute. Player.health, as you saw earlier, returns the health. Player.maxhealth returns the max health. Player.hunger returns the hunger. Player.experience returns the amount of experience that the player has. Now you can see at the bottom, my level is 6. However, the experience actual levels is 108. Player.level will return the 6. Player.version returns a text of the player's version. Now it doesn't specify exactly the version as I am on 1.8.9 and it says 1.8.x. This is the text meaning that it can't be used in stats. However, player.protocol can. Player.protocol returns the protocol version number of the Minecraft client that you are on. In this example, 1.8.9 is 47. A full list of the different numbers and versions I'll put in the description. The only use I can think of this placeholder is for testing, is for like version-based stuff. Like maybe a certain ha certain part of the house requires you to have a certain version. Player.game mode returns the game mode that you are. It is a text, I'm sure that's obvious. For location, we have player.location.x or .y or .z and all these will be here. Now these are all separate placeholders, I just combine them into one. So this two is X, um, 103 is Y, and four is Z. And if I, if I move around, you can see that my coordinates are changing. On the scoreboard, for a bit more of a live example, it updates a lot quicker. As you can see, I'm moving around and they are updating. Underneath that, we have pitch and yaw. Now this is the um, direction I am facing. You can see on the scoreboard, this is a bit more, uh, the scoreboard updates a bit quicker, so you can see that it's changing while I look around. Group.name, this is the group name. If we go to the housing menu and go to permissions and groups, you can create a group here and the name of that group determined you can change with the rename group is what will show. The tag will be the tag and priority is the priority number. 
Now owner by default is 100, I can't change this. But if we go to uh, resident, for example, and go to change priority, it's two. So anyone with a uh, resident will be two. I've never seen this used in an actual house before, but it's not bad to have. Next, we have player.group.color. This returns the color of the group that the player has, meaning that you will need to add text after it to actually have an effect. Player.region.name, I currently returns none, but it will return the text of the region that you are currently in. I have a region here. You can see the two uh, points. So it creates a box here. If I were to go in and you look at the scoreboard, you can see that it changes to test region, as that's what I called it. Onto the player team stats. We have player.team.name, and this returns the player uh, the team you are on's name. Now note that this is not colored, and the yellow text is because I added the color code yellow before it. Team.tag returns the actual color tag. Team.color returns the actual color, so meaning you do have to put text after the placeholder for it to actually do anything. And player.team dot players slash and then the team name in my case i'm using blue will return the amount of players on the specified team i switch back to no team and you can see some of them have updated it is now saying no team for the name tag there's nothing there color the default is just gray and there are no players on blue so it's zero as for the special thing you can do with the ping placeholder now the ping placeholder does look like it returns a text or a string but what's super interesting that the admins actually didn't mention i don't think anywhere is that it can also return a number. I have an NPC here where if I go inside, you can see that I set a player stat ping to player.ping. If I right click on this NPC, I have it send a message that says that the ping placeholder gives us the value of 43 MS, while the ping stat gives us the value of 43. So yes, ping can actually be used in stats, which is interesting. I found that out recently. I haven't seen this anywhere, but it's super cool to know. Moving on from player stats, we have house stats. House.name returns the name of the house. If we were to go to the house settings and change the name, let's just call it hello, maybe put a red text before it, it will update to hello. House.guest returns the amount of guests that are in the house. This does not include the owner. House.players returns the amount of players, and this does include the owner. And house.cookies returns the amount of cookies. I don't have any cookies in this house, I just created it. On to date stats. Now these are kind of cool, however, the only one you will probably use is date.unix. For date.year, you would add the argument of the time zone. So it would be date.year slash time zone. Now I'm pretty sure Hypixel is set in EST. I am personally also in EST, so that's what I use for most things. But you can replace this with CST, PST, or any other time zone. Shortened time zone, I should add. A quick look, we have year, month, day, hour, minute, and seconds, and you can see all the values here. I am indeed recording this on March 21st. Note that the hour is in the 24 hour time, or military time. And that's for the schedule ones, but now the most important one here, arguably, is date.unix. This is a really big number, as this returns, this returns the amount of seconds that have passed since January 1st, 1970. This is often used in, this is often used in playtime functions or stuff like that. Now, as soon as this changed, that means a second has passed. So, if you detect a change in this placeholder, then you can add a second to the player's playtime. If you want a full video on that, I do have a playtime tutorial. Now, one of the most important and useful placeholders is random.int. This returns a random number between two values set. So in this example, I have it set to 1 or 11. If we look at the actual message here, you can see my example text, and then we go into the actual, and then we go on to the actual placeholder. You see I have random.int, standing for integer, slash 1, 11, add, no, make sure that there is a space, and the end of percent. This will return a number inclusive, meaning it does include the number specified, between 1 and 10. Now, do note that the second parameter is not inclusive. This will not return, this will never return 11, it will return 10. If we wanted to include 11, we would set this to 12. So always add one more to the second parameter. On to one of the most important placeholders, we have the stat placeholders. For player stats, meaning that these are locally for the player, only visible to the player, is stat.player slash and then the stat or the key you want to use. To keep it simple, make sure to always keep it under 16 characters and all lowercase. In some places, using uppercase letters for the placeholder for the stat placeholders bugs out. Now there's nothing here, but if I were to click on this NPC that increases our kills by one, we go back, you can see one. If I were to spam this a little bit, it will go up to seven. There we go. Global stats can be accessed from any player in the house. And while we can see the same key here, they are different. We can go with this NPC, which will add one to our global stat. We clicked it a few times, so now it's 10. I want to note that inside the NPCs is just a change player stat that changes kills by one. 
For global stat, we have the same thing, but for a global stat. And now we have team stat. Now team stat is also a global stat, but is specified for a specific team. You would use stat.team slash and then the stat key or name followed by a space and then the team name. Earlier, I used the blue team, so I'm just going to continue that. And as you can see, we have I'm using the stat wins for the blue team. If I were to click on this NPC, you can see inside here we have a change team stat. The stat is wins. We increase by one for the team blue. Click on that a few times and this stat will go up. And that's it. I appreciate you for watching. If the placeholders ever get updated, then this video will be updated. So look at the description for an updated version. I appreciate you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.